Are you struggling to get consistent financial data for your business in one easy to view dashboard? Well, if so, this video is for you. I'm going to be going into detail on how to use Airtable blocks specifically for the purpose of getting some financial insights quickly and consistently for your business. Hi, my name is Gareth Pronovost. I'm an Airtable and Zapier consultant, and I help my clients unlock the full potential of these softwares, giving them time back every week, allowing them to work on their business instead of staying in their business. In this video, as I mentioned, we're going to be taking a look at financial snapshots, uh, specifically using the Airtable blocks. But before we get to that, I want to do two quick housekeeping uh, comments. So number one, if you are curious about learning more about Airtable, I strongly encourage you to click subscribe to this video. This channel is entirely dedicated to creating Airtable uh, tutorials and walkthroughs, helping people realize the full power of this amazing software. So if you want to learn more, definitely check out our channel, click subscribe. This place was designed with you in mind. Uh, and second point is that uh, in this video, we're going to be talking about financial metrics from a KPI level. Uh, and I want to really clarify that there's a big difference between the way you know your typical accountant and bookkeeper will think about uh, numbers as compared to how we're doing it here. This is really more high level stuff and this is not, we're not going to get into a PL, we're not getting into a statement of cash flows, any of that stuff, no balance sheets. Um, so this is really, you know, how, how do you get those insights that you need in order to make financial decisions for your business without getting like stuck in the weeds of looking over your numbers. Okay. So that's really where we're coming from with this. So just wanted to, you know, be uh, forthcoming in the beginning. So without further ado, let's jump on into this. So you'll see that we have a pretty simple and straightforward, uh, setup here. We've got some contacts. And uh, in our contacts, these are different clients that we have sold on engagements. And uh, basically what we have here is a value for each project. So when a client engages with us and they say, yes, we want to buy, you know, each, each project might have a different value and we record that value on the contact level. And then we also carry invoices. And so on our invoices, uh, what we do is we're looking at both the invoice number, of course, that's linking to a client. And then we're bringing in uh, both when did we send that invoice and how much did we, well, how much was the payment for? And then also when did they pay the invoice and how much did they pay? Because sometimes you might send an invoice that's like 20% upfront and then remainder on completion or whatever, right? So there's a bunch of different scenarios here. So we're trying to capture all of that in this example. So uh, keeping that in mind, let's jump into contacts again and see what we're really looking at. So. All of the data in this table is what's getting summarized on these dashboards. And you'll see we've got four major dashboards built. First, we're tracking monthly revenue over time. And so this is when we sell a client, when we sell an engagement, uh, we're recording the value of that project all in one month. And this is why I say this is not really the way accountants would tend to think about numbers because uh, very often, especially with small business, we're going to be on a cash basis. And so our accountants will encourage us to record our sales when we actually receive the dollars, right? But there's another perspective as well, where we might, we might want to know how much did we actually like sell? How many new engagements did we sell in that time period, even though we haven't collected the money yet? And that's what we're really recording here, right? Because let's jump into this first one. So this is this is a chart type on the block and on the settings, you'll see that it's looking at a specific table, the contacts table, and it's looking at a specific view. In this case, it's looking at the master view. And what it's doing is it's the X axis, right? So that's the, uh, the horizontal axis, right? Is, uh, is a date and it's the proposal accepted date. So when somebody, one of our clients said, yes, I want to engage in business. Yes, I accept this proposal. That's the day that we record. And then that's the day that we're uh, bucketing these values and you'll see bucketing values. So we're grouping them all by the month. So that's all right here. So if I sold something on October 5th and something on October 15th, they're both going to be combined into October because we're bucketing by that. And then the Y axis, the vertical axis, we're looking at uh, the value of the project. And so this is where we're saying, this is how much we agreed on. This is the price we agreed on. Uh, and we're summing. So you'll see we're, we're aggregating this, the, we're taking the sum 
of all of the uh, project's values. And so that's, uh, that's how to set this up. So let me just really quickly jump in here and uh, actually need to bring in uh, that proposal accepted date because it's hidden from this view. So let's bring that in. And so let's go ahead and for this example, uh, add a new, let's say client five just confirmed that they wanted to buy with us. So we would add that down here. We would say what day it was. And then of course, what, uh, what proposal they accepted. Maybe that's a $3,000 engagement. When I do that, once I leave that, you'll see that this uh, graph just jumped up. And so it is automatically adding that $3,000 into the month of December. So if I were to take it out again, you'll see that graph shrinks back down to 11K total. Putting that 3K back in, automatically jumps up to 14K. So this is cool because it's updating in real time. As soon as we have that new information entered into Airtable, our, uh, our little KPI dashboard is getting updated as well. All right, so secondly, let's take a look at our total AR. So what this one is, this is a different type of block. This is a summary block. And the summary block is gonna look at the contacts table. And in this case, I'm looking at the finance view. That's the view we were working out of. And what I'm doing is I am adding up AR, the field AR, I'm doing a summary of that and I'm summing it. So what does that mean? Let's look at our AR. So we have here a total, uh, total AR field. And so maybe what we should do is kind of dive into this formula and how it works in order to drive that metric. So this formula is looking at the amount that's unbilled and it's adding the amount that's uncollected. So we have three formulas here. So here's the amount that's unbilled. Here's the amount that's uncollected. So let's take a look at each one of these. So for example, we've got the value of a project at 5,000. And in this case, we build for that full 5,000. And so when we look at uh, the amount collected, we have, no, we have not collected anything yet. And this is driven by our invoices. Have we collected anything? No. So we haven't collected this. And so the amount that's unbilled is zero. And so this amount here is the value of the project minus the amount billed, right? So we said it's a $5,000 project. We billed $5,000, so we've billed the whole project. So perfect, that should be zero. The amount uncollected is going to be the amount uh, billed minus the amount collected. So in this case, we're looking at the invoices and we're rolling up the amount that's been collected. In this case, that's zero. And so the amount that's uncollected still remains to be that $5,000. The total accounts receivable is going to be the addition then of the amount that's not billed and the amount that's not collected. In this case, $5,000 is uncollected. So let's go back and into our invoices. Let's suppose this uh, client did pay this invoice. We can go ahead and record a full payment here. As soon as we do that, uh, we need to allow this formula to kind of catch up. It takes just a moment. You'll see that we billed 5,000. We collected 5,000. So zero dollars for this client is unbilled. Zero dollars for this client or project is uncollected. And so we have no account receivable remaining for this client. And so of course then this amount here, this total AR is the sum of this whole column. And that goes down as we collect invoices, which is exactly what we would expect. Now we have two different parts that make up this 21,000 here. We have the amount that uh, needs to be collected and we have the amount that needs to be billed still. So let's go ahead and send out some bills and, sh and see what they look like when we don't actually collect them before we collect them. So let's suppose that client two, give Airtable just a moment to catch up. Let's bring client two in and let's bring client three in. And let's say that we send out uh, $2,000 uh, invoices to both of these clients. So you'll see that total AR hasn't changed, right? Because we haven't collected any more money from them. But what has changed is the split of that 21,000 and how it gets uh, you know, divided between both the amount uh, that's uncollected and the amount that's unbilled. In this case, we've got uh, more money showing up in the uncollected amount and it was taken from this unbilled amount. But again, the total does not change. These two numbers will always equal that total amount. So just, you know, think about the different ways that you can set these things up. Maybe you 
uh, collect on the spot every time for your customers, and so you don't have the need to have this uncollected amount, or maybe your, your customers are billed instantly, and so you don't have the need for an unbilled amount. But in any case, tracking your AR is a very, very vital thing for all businesses to do, and Airtable makes it super quick and easy just by looking at the data that you already have for your business. Of course, you know you should be tracking your invoices uh, and, and keeping a log of them somewhere anyhow, and so now you have the ability to just within you know a few moments just have these things set up so that you have real-time analysis and high-level KPIs for your business. All right, as always, I hope you found that to be super helpful. If you did, please be sure to click thumbs up on this video, and if you don't want to miss future content, be sure to give us a subscribe as well. If you have any custom Airtable work that you'd like a little help with, we also offer free consultations. Check the description below. There is a link where you can put some time on my calendar and we can chat about what is possible in terms of helping your business uh, by employing the full power of Airtable. And as always, best of luck as you continue to grow your empire. <laughs>